Hi, this is Andrew Smith, instructor at Ferris State University and runner of artbysmitty.com. This is part four of the Autodesk 1 2 3 Catch asset creation tutorial series. We're going to be look, taking a look further at this chest and finishing up the model and the textures so that we can then bring this into an HDR environment and render out a nice image. Um, of this chest in any t particular type of HDR environment that we want. Uh, so a few comments on the last videos were saying that it would probably be easier just to box model this and, and you know probably go about building this asset differently just based off of reference images uh, and that is true. Uh, this is a very simple object that could it's basically a box that we could model and texture probably a little bit quicker using a different method but the beautiful thing about this is this photo fly is that it can be used with any type of model that you see uh, in real life. So if you had a sculpture of uh, a historical figure out in a monument somewhere or a pile of rubble that would otherwise take a long time to artistically sculpt and model, uh, you could use the same workflow uh, on a more complex object. And, and it would just go much faster than if you were to create it from scratch by yourself or with reference photos. Um, and we're just using this chest as an example um, of, of that type of workflow, not necessarily saying this is the correct way to model this chest, but uh, it is a very effective way for capturing anything in your environment. And if you, especially if you want to make changes to something in your environment, like a sculpture and go in and, and add details in ZBrush. So here are some f a few examples of, of stuff I've worked on at the U of M 3D Lab that has almost 7,000 views in a few months here. Uh, and these are just, if I play this video, uh, it's going to show you um, a quick few. Uh, you know, this was a statue on U of M campus that I did on my lunch break in less than a half hour. Got it in a ZBrush, and all this detail um, would otherwise take forever to sculpt and get into a 3D package if I was to, you know, model it off reference images. Uh, so hopefully you can apply the process we're using with this chest on very complex objects like this sculpture or this rock uh, with all this foliage that would otherwise be very difficult to go in and, and generate yourself. Uh, just another rock, you know. Um, didn't take anything but 20 to 30 minutes to take the photos and import it into my PC and upload it to Wonder 3 d Catch. Uh, we did this back when it was called PhotoFly, but again, here's another example of just a environment object that would otherwise take me forever to model all these rocks and stones and sand. Uh, so hopefully you can apply this process to anything you find out in your environment. Here's another rock wall that we found that would have been very tedious to sculpt and texture, and here's a vehicle uh, even that would take forever to go and sculpt uh, and texture, especially all this grunge and, and wires and tree branches going in and out of it. Uh, so hopefully you can apply the same techniques we're doing to the box to more complex objects like that vehicle. Okay, moving on. Uh, let's go ahead and hit F for front, Z to zoom. And I'm going to select this and hit 3 for border mode. And I'm going to come hit control, hold control and select edge so it converts this selection to edges. And I'll hold alt and select these guys uh, so that I'm left with only uh, you know, these these bottom edges, or the bottoms of these feet. Hit G to turn off my grid so I can see this a little bit better. Uh, and I'm just going to come around and make sure that I have just the bottoms selected. Okay. Perfect. Alright, so what I'm going to do now is come over here um, to my make planar and make it planar in the Y. And then I'm going to also move this, move all these edges down um, so that they're, well, they already are at zero. So that works. Um, looks like we missed one here. And that just looks like a stray vert that was created. So let's just go ahead and delete that. And that's fine. Okay, I'm going to go back to 2 and control click to my vertices, and I'm going to make sure they're all um, at 0 in the z-axis. So now that now if I hit F for front, Z to zoom, it's sitting flat. 
uh, which is important. Okay, now what we want to do now is come in here, G, and I'm going to just start uh, connecting some of these edges together, or bridging them together, as it were. And we'll actually come in here and, um, you know, it's stretching out the texture because it's basically telling them to use existing UV space. Um, so we don't really, we'll unwrap the, these parts of the chest later. So now we're just completing the model. And I'll select an edge, I hit Alt R to ring the selection, and then I will connect it a certain number of times. So let's just say three for now. Looks pretty good. Come in here, select this edge and this one, and bridge them. Same command here. And here. Okay, very nice. Uh, now we need to come in and actually take some of these border pieces and do the same with them. Holding shift by moving them, uh, and then I will scale them to in. I will then bring them back up and bridge. I will move that down a bit to coincide with that edge loop. And then I'll come in here and, and bridge these, these corner pieces together. And again, this isn't the best workflow for this particular chest piece, but uh, you know, for any mesh that you're deciding to do um, this way, uh, it's going to be very, it's going to be a lot easier than trying to model it yourself. Okay, bridging that, and bridging the final piece. Actually, we need to have. This guy come up, we'll go to verts, target weld, him to here, and then we will connect this final edge here by hitting bridge. Okay, the next part of this is we actually have to continue those edge loops, so Alt R, and then we need to connect this how many times? One, two, three. So we're going to have two connections. Hit OK. Connect that piece with this piece, and then we will connect this piece with this piece. And I'm going to speed this process up uh, and just finishing closing off each one of these corners. So for this part, uh, since it's stretching out my textures, I'm just going to apply a standard uh, material to it so I can kind of see my geometry a little bit better. And continue blocking out uh, the rest of these corners the way I did here with all, with all quads. Okay, so now I have the rest of this mesh finished off using all quads and edge loops. Uh, we'll go in here and delete these edge loops later uh, to optimize this down into a game ready mesh. But for now, I just want to keep the edge flow going nice and neat. Um, let's hit M and apply the other material to it. You see the, the polygons we just created have WAC UV space. So what we have to do is uh, apply an unwrap modifier to this mesh hit edit 
and what we're going to do is we're going to come down here and we're going to select uh, all the polygons that we just created uh, and then after that we're going to uh, basically flatten mapping them uh, we're going to you know re-unwrap them so I'll pause the video and get on with it Okay, so now that our mesh is complete and the, the holes are filled, uh, we can go in and I'm going to apply Unwrap UVW modifier, hit Edit, and here's our layout, our final UV layout. Uh, could be better, but it's not bad for just a quick model that we're doing here. Uh, okay, so let's go to Tools, Render UVW Templates. Uh, our texture map is 2048 by 2048. We're going to fill this in with white no edges, no seam edges, and we need to change this to solid and then render a UV template. Okay, Max freaked out on me a little bit there, but we do have our template now. So what I have to do now is hit save, and I'm going to save this image to my desktop. Actually, I'll save it in the demo folder as a JPEG and as UVW. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is open up my texture sheet and I'm going to come here and find this UVW, bring it in Photoshop, Control A, Control C, Control V in a new layer, set it to multiply. Uh, and then I can come in and start, I'm just going to do a really quick job here. I'm going to hit M on the keyboard and copy this nice wood texture here. And I'm going to paste it on a new layer. That is going to fill this bottom area. And I'm going to duplicate this and make this nice brown texture come down here and occupy these edges as well. Uh, obviously I'd spend more time painting this texture and making it look uh, appropriate, but this is just going to have to work. So turn off that and hit Control shift Actually I'm just going to save this. And now if we come back in here into 3D Studio Max, I can delete that unwrap modifier and we can see our bottom is now textured nicely. Um, I could go in and, and render some ambient occlusion in these corners, but, uh, you know, I'm not really going to worry about that too much at this point. Uh, the, the main thing is that I have geometry down here, it's unwrapped, and I can texture it how I want. Uh, the next part is going to be, obviously, if I hit render, um, our model had some holes in the, in the floor, but I'm just going to actually make that solid, uh, and I'm going to do that in the texture in Photoshop. We also have some problem areas uh, in the sides like these little white dots from artifacts from projecting in ZBrush. So we're going to go in our texture map and the next part of this tutorial is uh, basically going to be spent in here fixing all of this. I always duplicate a layer and I'm going to come in and basically just start painting away. Okay, I finished fin uh, painting the bottoms and uh, cleaning up some of the 
the artifacts. I'll hit Control S and save, and then I'll come back into 3D Studio Max and see my changes applied uh, appropriately. So I no longer have those black holes down at the bottom. Uh, it now appears to be solid wood, which is perfect. Okay, we can even come in here and uh, you know maybe start painting some details on the bottom of this just just for the heck of it. Uh, create a new layer, and I'm just going to hit uh, B for brush. Bring this on up. Um, hit M, and maybe I'll grab some of this, copy, paste it, and we can move it here to the bottom. Um, after this, I'm going to say something like overlay or soft light, and then I'll grab my eraser brush. something like so and come in here and just start adding some wear and tear to the bottom of this um, I can also grab my brush tool and do the same thing just giving it a little bit more texture Control S, come in Photoshop or back in the 3D Max and check out our changes. Looking better. Um, and if I wanted to finish this, I could just poly paint and ZBrush and, and fix everything. Uh, but the the whole idea now is that we have this, this asset uh, now created. And we can come in here and start deleting some of these edge loops that we no longer need. Alt L, Control Backspace. Alt L, Control Backspace, and just kind of cleaning up some of the unneeded geometry on this model, and in lowering our poly count. And if we hit render, we'll see that everything still appears to be nice and neat. Okay, so that looks good for now. We can't really do any more optimizing unless we start screwing up our unwrap. Um, so right now we're sitting, if I hit 7 on the keyboard, we're sitting around 300 polys, which eh, too bad. Um, but we could optimize this down further if we really had the time. Um, but again, uh, going from a, a Autodesk123 catch file to a nice simple object like this, um, that looks really, really nice. Uh, without a whole lot of texture work is pretty impressive and again you could use this for statues or for trees or for tree stumps or for gravel uh, you could use it for anything in the real world not just um, you know uh, inorganic solid meshes like this this tree or this treasure chest here so try and be creative with this whole process uh, the next part is going to go over bringing this into an HDR environment and rendering it in light different lighting situations this could be cool if you were going trying to take an artifact from a museum and create a digital version of it and show people what it would look like um, you know sitting out in Egypt in the middle of the day even though it's inside in a museum right now or you could show what it would look like at night when people aren't used to seeing it uh, etc all kinds of useful tools for this uh, and so that's it for part four thank you for watching